everybody, it's Corey Taylor here, and you are watching the Spotlight Report. So thanks for your time again, mate. Okay. Super honor. You have been on my bucket list from day one. So solo album, three years into the release, the first uh, one year almost since you released the second one. Has the expectations been what you wanted to be? Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, the 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 album's kind of been embraced by everybody. Um, you know, the shows have just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. The more and the more the music is out there, it's just kind of taken on a life of its own. You know, I mean, I I I, I feel like maybe people in understand what the first one was which was just kind of a collection of songs you know but then with this one there was more focus there was more passion there was just the songs were better and now the live show is kind of reflecting that and whatnot so it's actually you know it's, it's really started to kind of come into its own so we're really happy i can't believe the man behind the mask is also the same guy who plays power ballads like through the glass and um, blue eyes on things your range is incredible do you prepare differently for every time of show you're gonna do, or that comes to you naturally? I mean, as I've gotten older, I, I have to kind of, you know, look out for that and prepare myself for it because, as you know, as you get older, you, there's certain notes that you can't hit anymore, or it gets a little harder to hit those notes. And you just and you want to make sure that the show that you're putting together is the strongest that you have, you know. Um, but at the same time, you know, I, I recognize that there are a handful of sh uh, songs that people really want to hear, you know, and you, you try to make sure that your career is really represented in a great way. And uh, yeah, it's fun. It's fun to be able to, you know, kind of, you know, put these things together and, and you know, throw some change ups in there and, and just have fun with it. How do you balance your life? Stone Sour, Slipknot, Cory motherfucking Taylor, family. How do you manage your life, mate? That's a damn good question. I have no clue, dude, to be honest. Um, I just, you know, it's one of those things where you prioritize with the time that you have, with the moments that you have, and you just kind of go for it. And um, when I'm at home, I'm, you know, I'm a dad, I'm, a, I'm you know, a husband. Uh, when I'm on the road, I'm, I'm working and stuff, you know, so you try to balance all the time uh, that you're on the road with the work that you need to get done and stuff. And it's just, you know, it's just, it just, you make sure that the focus is where it needs to be, you know? So when I'm at home, my focus is on my kids and my wife. And when I'm out on the road, it's on the work that needs to be done. You always be very outspoken, and I love that fact from you. Uh, Culture Hit, that song. It's about, I think it's about social media and all the cre right, creepiness right. and shit from yeah. social media. AI come into place. Does AI and all this shit just worry you? How you see these things coming on and playing out? It's interesting, man. It's kind of like that's the buzz thing right now um, that everybody's talking about. And I uh, obviously, you know, I, I don't like, you know, the you know, pondering the fact that there's a program that can kind of mimic anything, you know, because I mean, it's we have such a hard time with reality these days. It's hard to now we're we're creating or we're instigating or we're encouraging this thing that can make it you know so we have no idea what reality is you know and I think instead of concentrating on that I think we need to be concentrating on the things that are real and concentrating on the the relationships that we need to heal with with people when it comes to beliefs or or conspiracy or hatred or like violence I mean. We need to be concentrating on that instead of worrying about an engine that can create a Beatles song from scratch, you know? Like, that's the thing that we should be really kind of putting energy into and, and less into the technology that, that may or may not tear the fabric apart. People know Cory Taylor the singer, author, podcaster, but I want to talk about Cory Taylor, the guest star on Charnado 4. Yeah. <laughs> How did that happen, man? And whose idea was to call you number eight? That was, uh, actually, that was Tommy Davison's. He, uh, in the moment, was like, he was like, wait, what was your number on, on Slipknot? And I told him, and then that's what he that's what he referred to me in the movie, which was really cool, you know? Um, I literally live in Vegas. So when I heard, when they, when they were shooting there, they were trying to get as many celebrities as possible, and uh, they were like, you want to be in it? And I was like, of course I want to be in it. What are you, nuts? So <laughs> I literally went down. They filmed my part of the stratosphere. I shot down. I hung out in horrible clothing for about, you know, four or five hours, shot my thing. It was that quick and drove home and I went to bed and that was it, you know? So it was just, it was just one of those things where I was just lucky enough to be at home and lucky enough to be doing something that ridiculous. And we had a lot of fun with it. Writing question, 
It's okay, you don't want to answer, but how's the status on the drummer search from Slipknot? No updates. That's no updates all so far. Per no perfect. And what's the status on the experimental album you've been teasing with Clown? Oh, do, oh uh, uh, look outside your window? Yeah. That is very, very close to being released, man. I, I know that, I mean, it's something, it's, he's been trying to, to get that released for so many years, and it's so special, and I just listened to it the other day, and it is so good, dude. It's going to blow people's minds. Like, I don't think they're going to be ready for it, you know? Um, it's, some of the, my, it's some of my favorite lyrics I've ever written. I mean, I, I forget sometimes just how poignant it is, you know? And it was written at such a crazy time in our history that it kind of takes me back to that moment, you know? Um, I just really hope that people dig it. And, uh, yeah, it, there's, it should, be, should be coming out pretty, pretty soon, man. I, I know he's been really focused on trying to get that figured out. And what about Stone Sour? Do we have anything on the horizon? No, uh, Stone Sour is still on hiatus. Um, this, as as far as like music goes, like Slipknot and this are my two priorities now, and that's that. I try to keep it at that. And just to finish, mate, I always ask my guests the same thing. Can you share with us any funny tour story, or what's the weirdest item you have ever signed for a fan? Oh, dude, I uh, I once I once I'm signed a pig heart. I, like a real pig heart like I and I mean it smelled very real and I was like they brought it to a meet and greet I don't know how the hell they got it in a meet and greet but I was like I was like I don't even know if I can use a sharpie on this like what the a pig heart a pig heart what the fuck and I mean I sat I, I mean I, I tried killed three sharpies trying to sign that damn thing I finally I just went that's about as good as it's gonna get I just basically drew a shitty hate on it and I was like take that and go away i don't ever want to see that again it smelled so bad dude and everybody around me was like whoa <laughs> it was so foul to this day oh god i think about it and i just start to freak out it's not good it's gross well, well mate thanks so much for your time dream come true mate thank you oh, so much all the best thank, thank you cheers bye <laughs>